Honey, I'm home. Honey, I'm in here. How was your day? Oh, I am so hungry. Oh, I didn't have time to make dinner, mm -hmm. but I picked up one of those super fancy mm -hmm. new frozen mm -hmm. TV dinners. Boy, that looks swell. <laughs> but not in this house. No way. So today on Between the Eats. We're cooking a TV dinner. Can you believe I've never had a TV dinner? Darling, you've changed. I have changed. And today, you're still really not going to have a true TV dinner experience. Unfortunately, I'm sorry. Because we are going to between the eats it up a little bit. Of make course. it a little bit, you know, you know what we do. So the beginning of a TV dinner came with um, Swanson having a lot of leftover turkeys, frozen turkeys, in the early 1950s. And so they decided, hey, how can we get this on an airplane as a convenient one package, easy to eat meal? And they came up with the TV dinner. And we're gonna start with your stuffing. Yes, it's actually a sausage stuffing. Sounds good to me. So I use a sweet Italian sausage. Right. You can really use whatever you want. And we're gonna start with a base of celery and onions. So let's melt some butter, chop up some celery, and chop up some onions. Okay. Add sage, salt, and pepper. Okay. And we're gonna know it's done by our noses when we smell the sage. Now, are you gonna use a fancy kind of bread? No. Nope, absolutely not. Just white bread. White bread? I use white bread. Everyone has their preference, you know? Good old white bread. Thank you. And you wanna get salt and pepper in here, correct? Sure, we're gonna cook these down mm -hmm. until they're just soften a little bit and just start to cook a little. Sure, and the reason um, I'm gonna add a little salt in sure. is it helps to sweat the vegetables. It helps to get the vegetables to release a little bit of their liquid a little faster. Okay, so we're gonna add some sage. Okay. Some, a lot. Sage is what- Some a lot. Yeah, definitely a lot. Um, sage is really what gives you that, the stuffing flavor. Yeah, that that's that love. classic stuffing flavor is the sage. Absolutely. And when you know you have enough is when you can smell it upstairs. Okay. So it's all by the nose, the way I cook around here. What's uh, your chef way of knowing you have enough? We'll have, we'll have measurements. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. No <laughs> measure. Let's just cover it. And then let's add some salt and pepper now. Okay. Too. And you can always add some later when you mix it all together if you need more or less. So I'm going to cover it in some pepper and then add some salt. Oh, it smells so good. Okay, so while that's finishing up, um, we're actually gonna chop up our bread. And like Chef David had mentioned, we are definitely just gonna cut the white bread and Thanks for cubes. making me so official today. I know, I'm Chef like Chef David. David. I like it. Well, that's what my kids call you. Oh, okay. So that, actually that's what, cause I'm so used to saying, oh, Chef David. David's coming. So, yep. um, yeah, so I cut it into strips and then squares. Okay. Perfect. And we're just gonna put it in that yellow bowl. That's gonna be our mix it all together bowl. So the key ingredients are the butter mixture with the celery and the onion. And then also, just to moisten a little bit, we have some turkey stock if we need. And then we're gonna add in, of course, the sausage and a little sweet homemade cranberry sauce. Now if we were stuffing a chicken, could we use a chicken stock instead of the turkey stock? Oh, absolutely, yes, yes. Ready to dump that in? Okay. Just be careful, this will be hot butter. You don't want to burn yourself with the butter. Thank you. Awesome. So we're gonna mix, give this a, give this a mix and see where we're at on the moisture scale. Sure. Because that's why we would add a little bit of the stock just to get it all like kind of sticky together. So let's add some stock, give it a mix. A little bit at a time, you don't want to flood it because there's no way to take it back. All you have to do is add more bread. The one thing you don't want though is a dry stuffing. No. So a little extra moisture that's going to cook out during the cooking process mm -hmm. is much better than not having it moist enough because then it's going to be dry and not that fun to eat. Because it is going to get baked again. So whether mm -hmm. it's stuffing in the turkey or just stuffing in a casserole dish that you're putting in the sure. oven, it is going to bake. So we want to have a little bit of moisture in there. All right. So let's add in some, we have some pre-cooked here. Um, sweet Italian sausage. You can use hot, like I did last Thanksgiving. I actually used hot sausage. Mix it in. 
And then some cranberry, not only for the color, but also for the flavor. Right. The beautiful homemade cranberry sauce that well, David you. made. Oh. Yeah, we have different seasonings in here, some fresh orange. Uh, we have some clove, and we also have a little bit of cinnamon. cinnamon. Mm -hmm. And there we have the sausage stuffing. That looks so good. Well, now that you have that delicious stuffing, I'm going to grab the turkey, all right? Sounds great. So we're not cooking a whole turkey today. No. In fact, we're going to do a real thin uh, turkey scallopini, and then we're going to stuff it with the stuffing, roll it, and sear it off in a pan. Cool. And I have a quick little tip here for everybody at home and for you if okay. you have never seen this. When you're flattening meat out, what you want to do is find either plastic wrap or a plastic bag, something like that, and place it in between the layers. Uh -huh. And then you just get your handy dandy meat mallet. You can see it just flattens out nice and easy. Cool. Easier than the plastic wrap method. Doesn't stick. Doesn't stick. Cool. One piece, and then you just go through each piece of turkey breast. This is just turkey breast that has been sliced thin to begin with, and then uh, we just take it a little thinner with, with the uh, mallet. How do you know how thin? How do you know when to stop? Well, with this... Like if you're really mad, like I could yeah, see me being like... You could, you could hit a little <laughs> harder, it'll go a little faster for you. Really, you don't want to hit it too hard, though, because okay. it'll tear the meat. Okay. Just a nice, let the weight of the mallet kind of do the job for you. Cool. So now what are we going to do? Roll these up? Yep. What you want to do is get your pieces of turkey out. Okay. And obviously, that is a huge piece of turkey. Yes. So we're just going to cut that down into sizable pieces, manageable pieces. Okay. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to just get our pieces of turkey, and if you could get me a little bit of stuffing. You don't want too much stuffing here. And then we're going to just roll it up. Just like you're making a cigar. Tuck the corners in a little bit. Okay. And that's it. And you just continue that process. after we have them all rolled, we're just gonna take them and put them roll side down first. And what that will do is it will seal the seal the roll. So you don't really need a toothpick or a tie for this process. So why do you brown them? Just to seal it and to keep it together? Yes, and it also adds flavor to the dish. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the whole, it's called the Maillard effect. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing when you brown meat is you're actually caramelizing the meat. You're, you're taking, extracting the natural sugars that exist in the meat, and it just adds more flavor to the dish. Oh. They're just gonna sit here and cook, seal on the side, and then we're just gonna kind of turn them. And then what we'll do is we'll put them on a tray and finish them into the oven so that we know for sure that the stuffing and the turkey is fully cooked. And we're gonna transfer them into the oven just to finish them. And we have our oven set at 375. Yep. And we'll have them in there for about five to 10 minutes, depending on your oven and the temperature. And we know that with every great TV dinner, there's always a vegetable component. Yes, and David and I were both saying how our favorite Thanksgiving vegetable is the green bean casserole. Whose isn't? But you can't do much with that because without the mushroom soup and the french fried onions, it just doesn't taste the same. So we're just gonna undress it a little bit. Kind of take a restaurant look at it, a little restaurant version of it. And don't be scared, it's actually quite simple. Really easy yeah. to do it. Heat now. up our pan and get a little oil going. Okay. Okay. And then all we're gonna do is just cut our vegetables up. Terry's gonna cut some mushrooms for us. So I'm gonna cut some onion and garlic. Super healthy too to do vegetables this way. Yeah. And what's nice is we're gonna caramelize these onions. We'll get those in the pan first and get a little flavor, extract a little more flavor, just like we did with the turkey. Browning it up, caramelizing it. And you're doing a nice little cut technique on those mushrooms. Oh yeah? Yeah. What's the technique? Going around the uh, equator. I have a technique. I'm yeah, you're excited. going around the equator. Going around the equator. Yeah. It's not like a kissing game. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. So we're not going to go for a full caramelized onion here. Okay. We're just going to go for a nice fried onion. A lot of people recognize a fried onion from a good 1950s hamburger. Yeah. So to, cool. the, to this, we're going to add 
blanched green beans? Yes, and blanched meaning they're super green because, do you want to tell us about the process? Sure, you take a raw green bean, you get highly boiling water, and you dunk the, the green beans into the water for about a minute, okay. 30 seconds to a minute, depending on how many you have, and then you take it out of the boiling water and instantly submerge it into an ice bath and that shocks the vegetable and it'll keep it bright and green for you. And really, we're saying green beans on this dish, but any green vegetable, yeah. you use that same process for and it keeps that vibrant color. Restaurant tip. Restaurant tip. <laughs> cool, like this is it. This is how easy this is. This is our green beans. Yep, perfect. With salt, little pepper. Yum, yum, yum. Here's your dinner, dear. Oh, perfect timing. Just in time for our show. Yes. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this episode of Between the Eats. Big thank you to the good old Days House here Big in Bell Vernon, you. Pennsylvania. This place is absolutely awesome. Yes, and thank you for all that are watching. Remember to subscribe and share us with your friends. Between the Eats.